someone from CBS News is trying to contact you. They want to use your outhouse race video in their newscast, right? And I was like, what? Hold on, wait. You you were part of an outhouse race. Yeah. Where at again? It's in Conconoli, Washington, North Central Washington. Conconoli. Kind of, yeah. Did you build your own outhouse? You have to build your own. It's not an actual outhouse. It's a fake outhouse. Welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast. This is the place where we crank the dial of your children's ministry up to 11. 11. It's going to be good. I'm Dan Mateer. I'm Brent, Col- I'm Brent, Brent Colby. Colby. We know you now yes, at this thank point. You. Uh, and uh, this is episode number, what episode are we on now? Man, this is episode number 17. Wow. And just just for the uh, note, the Jumpstart Podcast is reaching international viewership at this point. It is. I saw this earlier today. I thought to share it. Check yeah. this out. International in the United States, Canada, Cambodia, Germany, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, yes. Romania, Japan, and United Kingdom, which you actually speak Jap- Japanese, right? Um, no, but I do speak uh, this one, number nine, United Kingdom-ish. You speak British? Yes. Okay, that's cool. I, yeah, I, but anyway, we're reaching international viewership. That's cool. The magic of I think next next month we got to get 10 country, one more country. That should be our goal. What's a country of choice? I mean, there's lots of we options. Got, we have to pursue, right? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking Denmark. How do you cater to the Dutch? Uh, I mean, is there like a certain... Um, Danish. Dan- oh, excuse me, Danish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, just, don't lost, we just lost a new okay. country. Let's forget. Uh, forget them. Let's forget. About- anyway, <laughs> the, uh, today in uh, Jumpstart Podcast, uh, we're going to jump right in with an interview with a great children's pastor, Craig Geis. Craig Geis has uh, tons of experience in children's ministry, knows his stuff, and he's talking about family ministry. He is. I had a chance to visit him just the other day, ask him the basic question, what does it look like to partner with families in children's ministry? And this is part of his response. Um, I want to know, because I know that you guys put a big emphasis on like family ministry mm-hmm. and involving parents in your children's ministries. So I was just going to ask you, you know, what, what is it that drives that in your beliefs and values and kind of what does that look like as you flesh it out in your church? Okay, so it comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6 and it deals with the four times that parents are instructed to talk to their kids about the things of God. And that's when they raise up in the morning, when they go along the road, when they're sitting down at any time, mealtime's a great one, and also when they're about to head to bed. And the way I put that together, if you get all the right initials, it says rest. And so I always tell the parents, bring your kids to church, we'll teach them about Christ. You come along for the ride, help us teach your kids and other kids about Christ, and the rest is up to you. (laughs) So uh, the best way to train people that don't know how to do stuff is to come alongside. Yeah. Come alongside those people that are already working in children's ministry and get to see what people do that have those skills, those teacher skills that they could take that subject. And like we had talked about earlier, give me a paper clip in 90 minutes and we're going to see this thing happen. Yeah. So for those folks that that feel like I don't know how to be a teacher or "I, I don't know what to say, we'll give you the materials, we'll resource you. And this is part of what you're doing with us. Help to resource and train when we need training and uh, get materials into their hands to, to preview even the next week's lesson, but also review what is talked about. Craig did a good job. He kind of explained, you know, he had that theological background, Deuteronomy yeah. chapter 6. Um, and then he kind of broke down in four categories. He encourages parents to talk to kids in these four environments. And then he he talked about how they help parents see what's going on ahead of time. They preview the material, they review the material. So when a parent picks a kid up from church, um, one, of course, they can always ask, what'd you learn today? But even when they drop them off in the morning, they already know what they're going to be talking about because they've been given that material ahead of time. I I really like that. Yeah, I like that hook you put in there, too. The rest is up to you having that (laughs) four-part acronym. I mean, it seems a little, uh, you know, a little cheesy, but it, that that works. That's mm-hmm. something you can talk about. Uh, and even as you, he says that phrase, the rest is up to you. I, I'd encourage viewers to steal that, man. That, that was good. And we're going to be posting that whole interview so they can get each part of that. Yeah, that full interview is going to go up in about two weeks. And he has a lot of other great ideas about just partnering or, like you said, coming alongside parents to help them be the spiritual leaders of their kids. Yeah. I think that's something we all believe in, but it's it's tough because... We don't, we're not in charge of the kids at home where we have 
control over the time that they spend with us, which is just a fraction of the time that they spend in school and with their folks and you know doing yeah, whatever else. Absolutely. This is a, just a fringe thing I got from that interview too. Did you see how he had the uh, the stars painted on his mural with the black lights yes, so that they were shining? I got to use that. That was really cool. <laughs> it was cool. In fact, he had his two uh, walls framing his stage were on pivots. So his where the yeah. TVs were mounted. So he's like, hey, check this out. And he swung these walls in and out. And he's like, it, it's cool. We can swing it like this for that. I can have extra storage. Wow. They use it for like different puppets and sketches. They have characters and stuff back there. It's yeah. pretty cool. Next time you're in Spokane, check out Craig Geis' uh, environment. Yeah, That's absolutely. really cool. Hey, uh, you know, we also have uh, a book review from Judah Smith. This is right here holding in my hand an advanced reader's copy. This book is not even out yet. This comes out February 26th. February 26th. This is a pre-release copy. Jesus is. This is Judah Smith's first book, I believe. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. It, it does a good job. In fact, I did a just quick review of it. I want to share a piece of that review with you guys here. And Great. again, like the Craig interview, the full review is going to go up next week. So um, just some thoughts on the book Jesus Is by Judah Smith. <music> Judah Smith has challenged the city of Seattle to fill in the blank. Jesus is what? What exactly? Who is Jesus? What was he like? People's responses might surprise you, and they might not. The important thing, according to Smith, is that people are talking about Jesus. The one-time church campaign quickly captured the heart of the city church and has become a central message of the leadership team there to tell people all about who Jesus is. A book of the same name has been written to share some of Judah's thoughts about Jesus. It is a great read that provides a picture of Jesus that is elementary for some and really profound for others. So this this book, uh, the, the concept of this book, Jesus is, this is something that I think if you live in the Seattle area or anywhere around where we are here, um, you're familiar with this or have at least seen it. Billboards, bumper stickers, the ads on the side of buses. Uh, this has been really kind of the, uh, since Judah came into leadership at City Church, kind of his, his emphasis and his push. And just in the first parts of this book, I haven't read the whole thing, you've read the entire thing, yeah. but, but just that, that concept, that very simple concept that what we are, what we teach, what we value has to do with who Jesus is to us, I don't think that can be overstated. No, and and it's you know you're interesting. You go on their campus and you check stuff out. We did a tour of City Church last month on the on the podcast here. It's everywhere. I mean, it, you almost get the sense like it started as a sermon series that well maybe we'll roll over and do it twice. And I think at some point they just realized this is who this is what we're about. We're about Jesus and and helping people define who Jesus is, which begs the question in my mind. How, how do we communicate who Jesus is to children? Um, I think we obviously use lots of stories of Jesus and we get all these different takes on Jesus' personality, um, his attitude towards certain things, and we get to tell these stories. But I think I tend to emphasize, like one of my favorite Jesus stories is Jesus clearing out the temple, yeah. right? Because you get this real manly, like right. violent Jesus where he he's a whip. Oh, he makes it. Yeah. He fashions a weapon and then beats people out. Like, how cool is that? Like to right. me, like, I'm like, oh yeah, Jesus was awesome. He's a, he's a tough guy too. Um, so, you know, I tend to emphasize like that story. I love telling that story, but I know there's other characteristics of Jesus that we express through all sorts of other different lessons. Yeah. Too. I, I read a book this uh, past month called Christ and Culture. And, and the premise of the book was how do we as Christians engage with culture? Do we, should we be separate from culture and let them do their thing? Let the world kind of exist and we do our thing. Should we try to try to transform the culture? Should we live within, but really not take part? And, and the, the start of the book was what you decide about how you engage with culture really has to do with who you believe Jesus is. Yeah. And, and the thing is, with this question, and I think the reason it is not just a sermon series and not just even a one-month, six-month emphasis, but something that, that Judah Smith has been pushing yeah. for years, the depths of that question. It's not something you can go, okay, I'm going to write down who I believe Jesus is in one sentence, and that's it. This is something you really need to process, study, and make, as a Christian, make the pursuit of your life. Yeah, and I think there's so much. Once we figure out who Jesus is to us, it just uh, it saturates yeah. every aspect of our ministry, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that, you know, we define Jesus probably in many ways according to the needs that we feel that we have. 
Um, I, I think some of us who maybe grew up in a, a, a fatherless home, Jesus is a father. Jesus is a family. Yeah. And I think that would be a theme that would come up over and over again in your ministry. Uh, maybe if uh, you know someone who um, had a really dramatic salvation experience or forgiveness experience, um, Jesus is uh, you know the the forgiver. Jesus is the graceful one. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think just being aware of it, yeah. who Jesus is to us, will help us make sure that we express the full character of Christ in all of our stories. Because of course, you know the brilliance of that whole campaign is that Jesus is blank. You put in a bunch of things in that sure. spot, and many, and you know they're accurate. Jesus is is uh, a three dimensional character. Yeah, and Jesus he, is fun. That's kind of the, the, what their children's ministry uh, yep. mission is. Jesus is fun. Exactly, yeah. and Jesus is fun. You know, um, Jesus is relational. Jesus is grace. Jesus yeah. is truth and justice at the same time. Yeah. I, I think it's easy to pick on people who latch on to just one thing. You know. Like Jesus is always very harsh or Jesus, you know what I mean? Jesus is strict. Right. Yeah. Jesus sits down with his hands in his lap yeah. and pays pays really good attention to the, the, yeah. the lesson. But but having something that you've owned and you've processed, I think lights a fire inside of you, especially as a teacher, especially as someone who's pouring out out of what's being poured into us. Yeah. Um, processing through that is an important thing. So one thing that Judas asked people to do is submit the, the fill in the blank, Jesus is blank. Uh, it might be cool to, to get a discussion going on our, our uh, podcast uh, web, uh, our, our YouTube channel or on the website, yeah. cmjumpstart.com. And in fact, if you submit a comment, a question, answer to Jesus is, we're going to give this book away to one person who, uh, who does that. So. That's right. You'll be the first one to have it in your hands and we'll we'll send it out advanced copy so on cmjumpstart.com or on the uh, youtube channel uh let's uh let's go and take a look at a tour of a children's ministry facility yeah i was out in west seattle um at westwood christian assembly Uh, a church you are familiar with i am familiar with i grew up in that church Uh, my dad's the pastor of that church and so i got to come back and visit the children's pastor there caleb valdivinos and so meeting him and seeing what he's done with it is just he has done an incredible job creating a cool environment in a you know just a great church in Seattle. So awesome. I want to show just a, a bit of that tour of what he's done with the place. Hey everyone, I'm here with Caleb Valdivinos at Westwood Christian Assembly. Caleb, you've been the children's pastor here for how long now? About a year and a half. Year and a half, very yep. cool. This is in White Center, just in a, a kind of suburb area of Seattle, Washington. And uh, yeah, so what's it been like the children's pastor at, uh, at Westwood? It's been very interesting because I'm not from a neighborhood like this. So um, there's definitely been some challenges just with the kids. Um, but I absolutely love it here. Um, we're really community focused, so I love getting um, in there with the kids and really yeah yeah cool <laughs> so here we are we're kind of outside your main gathering place on sunday i was hoping you kind of show us around a little bit sure cool Not check it out so this is kind of your main door and when kids come in this is the first thing they see now is this a set you guys have up all the time or is this something that kind of rotates uh i try to rotate this is the second month that i've done this at all um so last month it was a whole different christmas set and this time it's uh ds Nice. That's pretty impressive. So you actually created a Nintendo DS for your set. That's pretty cool. I did, yeah. Um, how do you make, I mean, how long does that take? This one took, oh my gosh, I started two weeks before January even, uh, before January, and I was up from seven at night till seven in the morning just finishing it before Sunday. <laughs> so, so Saturday night, you started at 7 p.m.? Yep. And you finished Sunday morning at 7 a.m.? 7 a.m. Before your Sunday morning yep. service? two hours before I had to come back. <laughs> So, Caleb, hardcore, right? Yeah. Twelve hour work binge. Right. He told me. He told me earlier. He brought his brother to help him. Yeah. And about like ten or eleven o'clock at night, he just was sleeping on the floor in the corner. <laughs> Caleb worked from seven p.m. to seven a.m. Not any day a week. Saturday night to Sunday morning. He said he ran home and showered and ran right back for church for wow. Sunday. Wow. And then got some rest after that. I hope. <laughs> oh, I hope. Wow. It's cool. Those are just pieces of foam. He spray painted, painted. Obviously had a great vision for what it was going to look yeah. like. But it's just pieces of foam. And I think he's reused some of those two or three times already through different sets. So man, he's yeah. stretching a buck to make a huge impact and fill up a huge space in that room. It's yeah. pretty impressive. That stage was really cool. And, and you can't undervalue momentum, both for you as a leader, getting excited about what you're doing, parents walking in, seeing that things are new, changing, fresh, kids. That goes so far. I mean, yeah. 
I wouldn't stay up all night, maybe, but uh, <laughs> his, his work definitely paid off. Oh, it's totally cool. He did a great job, and really has has um, in the different rooms of that church too. I mean, that's definitely his centerpiece at, on a rotating basis. But yeah, even you could see it starting to creep into the different rooms down the hallway. You know how they're they're set up downstairs. It's pretty neat. That's really cool. Well, hey, we want to give away uh, what we uh, talked about last month, yep. the High Voltage Kids curriculum. So based on people who commented on our YouTube channel and, and website on the cmjumpstart.com, we're giving this away to... Ta-da! Ta-da! Congratulations. So we'll be sending that in the mail soon, and you can enjoy that for your ministry. Awesome, Brent. Well, this has been a good episode. So uh, you know what I did? I, I, I'm on here, but I also watched this because I think it's it's good. I subscribe to the YouTube channel, and it, it just notifies me when a new uh, video comes up, when you post the interviews and uh, and you both post the uh, product reviews and stuff, which is really cool. So I would suggest that. Subscribe on YouTube. Just If you have an account there, subscribe. It'll, it'll be good for you. Yeah, it's nice. You log in, and it shows all your subscriptions. I subscribe to a bunch of channels on YouTube ourselves, and there's a bunch of other great uh, resources you, you can find online. People post... Funny clips, if you want to use yeah. in your church, we've talked about that before. Yeah. Great channels. People are doing a good job putting up a bunch of content online. So yeah. it's great to just grab it and have it accessible right away. Excellent. Well, thanks for watching today. We apologize to our Danish friends. Uh, don't, uh, don't be offended too much by us. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll catch you next time. Guten Tag. <laughs>